This video is about higher order derivatives. In this video, we're going to learn what they are, learn some new terminology in terms of concavity and inflection points, and understand the relationship between the function, its derivative, the second derivative, and the important features on the graph. Let's look at a real life example. So if our function f of t is the distance traveled, then our rate of change in distance traveled is that derivative. Let's think about the units there. So if our function is in miles, this would be in miles per hour. So this is our speed that we're driving, say. Okay, the second derivative, this is the rate of change of the speed. So this is how fast you're accelerating or decelerating. So in terms of units, this would be miles per hour per hour or miles per hour squared. So this is our acceleration. So how fast is that speed changing? So let's practice finding a few second derivatives. So first of all, in order to find the second derivative, we always have to find the first derivative. So let's take a look at our function here, f of x. For this function, I would probably need to rewrite that term. So we would have x to the fifth minus 4x squared minus 3x to the negative 1. And then our first derivative is going to look like 5x to the fourth minus 8x plus 3x to the negative 2. And if we're going to find the second derivative, we're just going to take the derivative of our first derivative. So we're going to have 20x cubed minus 8 minus 6x to the negative 3. Okay, so let's look at this second example. In this second example, we're using y equals. So our derivative notation, we usually use that differential notation, the Leibniz notation. Our derivative is going to be dy dx, and that's going to be 6x minus 1 over x, which we might rewrite as 6x minus x to the negative 1. Okay, the second derivative, so look at this right here. We're taking the derivative, that's what that notation means, take the derivative of the first derivative, which is our dy dx. And so the notation is d squared y dx squared. That's what we use for the second derivative. And if you look here, we've got two d's, so that's where, like where you have d squared. And then we have a dx and a dx, and so we put dx squared. That's the only way that I've come up with for remembering where those twos go. So let's do our second derivative. Our second derivative is going to be 6 plus x to the negative 2. We can do the third derivative. We can do the fourth derivative. We can just continue this process for as long as we want. Typically, we only, um, for more real life examples, and in this course, we're probably only going to look at the second derivative. Okay, so let's look at an example here uh, where we're trying to figure out what that second derivative might mean. So in this example, we say it says the following graph shows the total number of sales of iPods sold, S of t in millions of units, where t is the time in years since 2002. Okay, so let's list some of the important features of this graph. So our function here is always increasing, so that would mean S prime of t is always greater than zero. Over here it's pretty flat, but I bet that it's not actually totally flat. It's just the scaling that makes it look super flat. Okay, then let's look at our tangent lines. So as we start out over here, our tangents are pretty flat, and then they get bigger. So we start out close to zero. Those tangents get bigger, and then somewhere over here they start leveling out and getting a little bit less steep. They're still positive but not quite as positive. 
So that, sec that first derivative is increasing, then decreasing. And we've done that problem numerous times this quarter. Okay, so where were the iPods selling the fastest? So what they're asking us here is they're asking us where is that slope the steepest? Okay, well, it looks to me somewhere in this area maybe that slope is the steepest. It's kind of hard to tell because there's um, it's fairly flat there, but it does look like somewhere in there. So let's say um, let's say t equals six our slope is the steepest or maybe six point five or, or seven let's go six point five and this is a, a guess now that spot where the slope is the steepest that occurs where that second derivative is zero so let me let, let's go back to this this idea so over here over in this area this is where that s prime is increasing, right? And over here, that is where that s prime is decreasing. So if we're going our s prime, this is our s prime, is going up, then it's going down, up here somewhere that we're going to have the slope of s prime is zero. So the slope of s prime, that's that second derivative. Okay, so where your slope is the steepest, that's where our um, iPods are selling the fastest, and that's where our second derivative is zero. And then one last thing, so over here, this is where s prime is increasing. So this is where we're accelerating. That's acceleration. Over here, this is where our s prime is decreasing. That's where we're decelerating. Okay, so let's let's look at the this idea here. So when a curve has this basic shape, or maybe it's just part of this shape, maybe it's just like that, or maybe it's just like that, it's concave up. When a curve has this basic shape, it's upside down U shape, or just part of that shape, it's concave down. Okay, so let's look at what's going on with our slopes here. So if we remember, when we have something like this, as we move along our curve, our slopes start out negative and then gradually get positive. So our <coughs> slopes over here are negative, then it moves to zero, and then it gradually moves positive. So we said, we said f prime was increasing. Okay, over here, our slopes start out positive. gradually move to zero and then become negative. So we said our f prime was decreasing. So remember our f prime, if that's decreasing, its second derivative is going to be negative. If our f prime is increasing, its second derivative is going to be positive. So when your curve is concave up, that second derivative is going to be greater than zero. And when your curve is concave down, that second derivative is going to be less than zero. So let's look at where a f function might change concavity. So when it changes concavity, we give that sp spot a special name. We call that an inflection point. So this right here and this right here, those are both inflection points because over here we go from concave down, over here we go to concave up, here we go concave up, here we go concave down. Okay, so that concavity changes when our second derivative is zero. Let's see why. So remember, let's look at, let's look at just this one here. So over here we're concave up and that meant our f prime was increasing. Over here, we're concave down, so this is over here, so our f prime was decreasing. So if we tried to draw the graph of f prime, up here it would be going up, over here it would be going down, so that means somewhere in the middle it probably reaches a peak. So in terms of the second derivative, here the second derivative is positive, 
over here, the second derivative is negative, and this is like a stationary point on our first derivative. So right there, our second derivative has to equal zero. So inflection points occur where that second derivative equals zero. Okay, so let's fill out this, this chart here. So if we have our f of x is increasing, that means our f of x, you know, is maybe doing that, or maybe it's going like this. What we know from that is our first derivative is positive. If our function is decreasing, maybe it's doing this, or maybe it's doing this. But we know that that first derivative is going to be less than zero. Now, if we look at these two pictures that I've got here for increasing, this looks like it's concave down, and over here, this looks like it's concave up. So we don't know which it is. It could be either. So we actually don't know anything about that second derivative, because that second derivative tells us our concavity. Same thing for when it's decreasing. We don't know if our function is concave up or concave down. So our second derivative could be positive, it could be negative, but, but we don't know. So if we have a stationary minimum, our graph has to look like this. So that means the first derivative at c is going to be zero. So here's our c. We're going to have a stationary min, so it's got to be um, zero slope there. Concavity-wise, if our function looks like this, that means that that second derivative is greater than zero. So the second derivative is going to be greater than zero at c if we have a stationary min. If we have a stationary max, then it's going to look something like this. Here's c. We know the first derivative at c is going to be zero. And this looks like it's concave down, so the second derivative at c is going to be less than zero. Okay, so if f is concave up, then we've just said that second derivative is going to be greater than zero. If f is concave down, that second derivative is going to be less than zero. Let's look at what it says about the first derivative. So if it's concave up, that's this type of thing. Remember what's happening here is our slopes of our tangents lines are increasing. So f prime is going to be increasing. If it's concave down, that means our tangent slopes of our tangent lines is going to are going to be decreasing. So f prime is going to be decreasing. So if we have an inflection point, so maybe we're going like this or maybe we're going like this, so either way we have an inflection point there. Over here we go from concave down to concave up. Over here we go from concave up to concave down. So um, what's going on here is over here our f prime is decreasing. Over here our f prime is increasing. So on our f prime we have a min. If we're going the other way, here our f prime is increasing. So it's going like this. Here our f prime is decreasing. So it's going like this. So f prime is going to have a max. And again, if our um, ha if we have an inflection point, that second derivative is going to equal zero. So stop by for some more information about higher order derivatives in the next video.